I do want to, I don't know if I clickbaited a little bit with the thumbnail, the cow's best 60 foot ever. Uh, the cow has been 121 in the 60 foot. Uh, it's, it just went 123 and I just want to talk to you guys about suspension a little bit. So Ben. That gives but, you the matter of staging. Yes, we, we definitely had some issues with the trans brake and the, the glide was not 100%. So I'm, I'm sure it probably felt just as fast as the 121. It did. It was, but we were like rolling. There were a couple issues that were going on with the transmission. But um, Ben and I have pretty much tinkered around with this thing in order to get it to yeah. 60 foot the way it does. Yeah, so there's nothing out there that tells you how to do it. So no. you just figure it out yourself. Yeah, not many guys are 60 foot in this hard in the Camaros. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in the back and we're gonna work our way up. And first we're gonna talk about the parts that we got on here, and then we're gonna talk about the setup because it's there's no secrets. I put it out there. A lot of you guys have been hitting me up saying Nick needs help 60 foot in and Guitar Mageddon, you need to get up with him. And, and I've messaged him and he's literally ha he literally has I the identical setup that I got, okay? There's no difference. And the cars weigh within 50 pounds of each other. 50 pounds is not a lot. I and mean, when we're talking about a 4,100 pound car, 4,150. So uh, we got BMR tubular everything. And then we got their anti roll bar. We got strain shocks. Um, this one has a nine inch center section, but I mean, whether it's a, a ZL1 diff, or not, uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's got these drive shaft shop axles, which I do want to, to take a note and say they're doing spectacular. Uh, we had issues with the drive shaft shop stuff before, but that was solely because of an incorrect measurement. Once we got the proper measurement, they're holding up to extreme loads. So, uh, big thumbs up to the drive shaft shop. They got everything figured out and everything is working well. So, um, yeah, I like that. 373 gear. Um, 373. 373. Isn't it 373? 390. It's a 390 year? Is it really? Shut up. Seriously. I thought we went from a 350 to 373. I thought we went to 390. No, we did not go to 390. It's 373. Yeah, we because we talked about going to the 390. It would work way better with the 390. It was 390. Look at this. Rubber, rubber, rubber. Yeah, it still has all rubber bushings in it everywhere. So, not like we're not doing anything crazy. No. It's literally just got really a bunch could, of. It could be faster. Yes. But. And then up front here, the only thing that we have modification wise of suspension is we got two things. We got the Strange coilovers. Uh, these are just OEM valving from Strange. And then we got Motion Raceworks travel limiters. So, these are huge. You need to have these on every, every vehicle you own, has to have a set of travel limiters. Yeah. Uh, so let's t let's start off here with the suspension in the back. I'm gonna throw in some clips of the cars leaving, and we're gonna talk about how this car works compared to every other race car. So, for example, the Mustang, the Bad Apple. When we let go of the when we let go of the button, we click the button. The first thing that it does is it starts to separate. the ground trying to keep these tires from moving and then our bar angles and our bar angles once everything goes through the machine and gets calculated out and spits the answer out on the other side it tries to push the axle down away from the body and that's solely set up that's, that's how we have the car set up for drag angles. radials Angles, all drag radials. Angles, yep. So if we're on a slick, we just want to kind of hold it level, maybe squat a little bit and hold. Yeah. Now on this car, what's the biggest thing with this? We cannot do that. We yeah, cannot this, no ask it. What we set any of these angles to, these tires will never separate. Separate away from the body when you leave. They just you can't do it. There's no there's no there's no leverage to apply any power there's to. Nothing that attaches this, this spindle to the car that could make it do that. I mean, it's, it's impossible. You straight axle swap it, you can get it to happen. Yeah. On factory IRS setup, it's not going to. So what we have to do is it's like a perfect dance between the front end, the rear end, the weight transfer, and the shock. That's what you have to, tra and power management. Timing. You have to have everything working at, the, and you, they've seen us struggle when it wasn't working right and when it wasn't doing everything exactly how we wanted. Timing. It's all about slowing down the squat of this and controlling the speed of the rise of the front, catching the front at the right time, that it doesn't upset the rear. Probably just testing for tomorrow. So 
So it's all about timing and having the right, having the dial set right and having the power set right, the right converter, yep. the and right gearing. This, it all plays into the launch, which you never think like, oh, my torque converter really matters on my launch, but Most we, cars it doesn't. We, we've spent some time and got it dialed in. So what we do when this car leaves is we got the shocks right now. We were on a super tight track and we were applying all the power we could. So we tighten the shocks up all the way there. Literally compression, 100% tight. Rebound, 100% tight. So we are full tight on the rear of the shock. Um, Jason cleaning everything up over here. So we have the rear end as, as tight as it can go to, to limit and slow down the squat. So it really has about one inch of squat. So, the fact that it does squat, one thing people don't think about IRS cars, alignment. Yes. These tires, if you look at the car driving down the road from behind, these tires don't sit flat to the road, they don't tow out, they tow inward. Because mm -hmm. when, when it squats, on these and it squats, the tire, the tread goes like this and it, it flattens out yep. to make a contact patch all the way across the tire. And that's just trying to be as efficient as possible. Yep. So with the alignment, we're, we're not giving out alignment details, no. but you know, it is true up the car, the, the car drives straight. One thing that the car does, we've been applying so much power that when it gets real light on the front end, it like, likes to drive left. So we put uh, some separation and preload in the anti roll bar to help straighten it back out. So that's like three quarters of a turn, I think. Yeah, a half a turn or a, a three quarters of a turn, something like that. So we got it figured out so the car drives perfectly straight. So we slow down the rear end so it doesn't squat. And we've had that kind of figured out for the longest time, but we'd still knock the tires off. It'd go like 10 feet and knock tires off. We'd get it figured out, and then we'd bump the boost controller up another notch. And it'd be a nightmare. And harder. And then all of our progress from before would be like washed away. Yep. And you have to start fresh whenever you try and start leaving harder and harder and harder. And then we came up front, and I got it with my, my guy Doug at Motion. Now we run these limiters on the Bad Apple. These are super nice travel limiter. And uh, Ben just MIG welded it to the lower control arm, MIG welded it to the body. And these are really nice. Now you can't pull it out and adjust it right now because this chain is the only thing holding this front tire and front suspension from drooping anymore. If we go outside the car, you can see from ride height, now this car does sit really high, so I know it looks like a lot, but from ride height, that's only two and a half, two inches? It's only two inches of, two inches, two yeah. inches of front end travels all the car has. Now you go to a looser racetrack, yeah, you might have to loosen it up. There, they'd be, there'd be that much of a gap. Yeah, they'll drop probably another four to six inches. Yeah, a lot. So, uh, we got the suspension of the front shock dialed in as best we could, but we ran into an issue where it would just overextend. The car would separate so much more than it needed to, and not only is that wasted energy, but the rear end already squatted to its limit, and then the front end would kept coming up, and it would just create a bob. As the front end's coming up, the rear end's already where it wants to be, it would bob and knock the tires off. So we put these travel limiters on there. Now, I don't know if travel limiters were big on IRS cars in, in previously, but one thing they did do, I mean, we could untie this and go out there and pull a big wheelie. But they, they got the timing right. Mm-hmm where it, it's not trying to do this number. It's yeah, not, it, it squat and then front end lift up after. It literally does it all at once. Mm -hmm. it, sa it plants the rear end, the front end catches the limiters, and it just it stays on those limiters all the way down track. If you watch very carefully in the video, it's literally, and you see it, it's skipping the front tires through the 60 foot. They're just inches off the it's ground. trying to plow through it with horsepower. <laughs> And we put more power, it might start power wheeling. Yeah. Which I'm okay with, because like this thing's so heavy and there's so much stuff to it, it's gonna be tough. It did it before on you when you had a steeper first gear. Yeah. It if just went right. 410 in it right now, I'd probably do it. Yeah. So here here's the I guess the, the consensus, the, the end of this video. If you have a fifth gen Camaro, now we're just talking about fifth gen Camaros, the Mustangs and the Corvettes are different. They're different monsters. These are probably one of the hardest cars to get to hook. CTSVs are different monsters. They hook up good. The, they hook up a lot better than these do. The fifth gen Camaros and the factory RRS struggle to hook up. 
what you need to do is first you need to go and just buy the whole BMR catalog and get some strange coilovers on all four corners and get these travel limiters. You need to go out there, you need to play with it. If the track's really good, you need to stiffen up the rear end. So one is, you gotta be able to control the squat. You can't let it squat down and bounce around. You have to have it squat and you have to hold it there. Only about an inch. Anything over an inch, wasted energy. Plus, I mean, imagine having squat like three inches. Dude, I've literally seen videos of these cars leaving with full exhaust and they're just scraping the exhaust on the ground. That is too much squat. You don't need to be doing that. About one inch of squat. So you gotta get the alignment right. And then you gotta have an anti-roll bar because once you start applying enough power, you need to be able to control how the car drives without the front end. So you need to drive it like a forklift with the rear end. You need to get the timing right. You need to figure out how much the front, and this is all horsepower wise, you need to figure out how much front end travel the car likes. And then you gotta find out where it is and limit it. Now, what I do need to tell you guys, you guys need to know, is the front end travel is very crucial to track conditions. If you're at a shitty track, you need to have more travel to help throw more weight back there and hold it. If you're on a real tight track, you wanna tie it down because if you have too much travel, one, it's either gonna bob because it's planting the tires so hard, or it's gonna try to wheel. So the two benefits, but a fifth gen Camaro, you're leaving hard, you're making 800 horsepower up and you're having trouble hooking up, you need to have a travel limiter. You need these regardless of how good, regardless of how good the track is. You, you need to have control over the extension. Yeah, you have to stop it at some point because if not, it'll knock tires off at 10 feet out every Remember time. how much, it literally had like eight or nine inches of front end travel and it would just, it picked the nose up and just hold it there all the way down track. This is way more efficient. This will net you time in the 60 foot. This will help your ET. This will get you going faster at the track. Yeah, this is the 360 foot and 330 maker right here. Yeah, and Motion Race Works, they're $100. It's literally the best $100 you will spend on your race car because you can shave. I mean, dude, we, we went 125 on a pretty soft tune-up. Like, there's no reason that anyone else out there should not be going 125. If you got six, 700 horsepower, you should be able to go 125. You should be able to go at least faster than a 130. Yeah, and if you're, if you're going 128, and you put these on there, you might go 126 because you're saving energy. I mean, you don't need that wasted energy. So that is you're spending time going up when instead you of forward. Could be going forward. So that's that's what it is. Uh, the Calmero is fine in the six foot. Now we're gonna we got we got a hot tune up in it right now that ended up breaking the the charge pipe or the exhaust on it. We're gonna fix it. Now we're gonna go to Glot. I don't know how the track's gonna be compared to that, but are we gonna just try it on this setup and see what it does? Oh, this is the big boys. This is the, this is the, I mean, this is the, we're trying to run after the bad apple too now. This is where we're trying to be within a couple tenths of the bad apple. Yeah. So that's that's where we are with it. And those, those right there, those things, you need to get all tubular suspension, you need to have travel limiters, you need to have strange coilovers on all four corners, and you need to have an anti roll bar on the car. You need that stuff. To, if you're trying, we're gonna try to go a team with it. We're gonna try to go 119, 118 in the 60 foot. I mean, that right there just makes it so much easier on the back end. Speaking of the bad apple, we got Wes here, and we got Jason. Jason, what is this? Look at this. This is this is what you do when you have Brazzle around. You look at all these little things, say, hey, can you fab something up for me? And he's like, I got you, fam. Shifter, shifter bracket. Four? The bad apple. So new shifter, going air shifter because am I not good enough? Just, well, no, nah, it's just consistent. It's more consistent when you've got it shifting itself on RPM. You know, it's one less thing for you to have to worry about. Yeah. So this didn't mount in there. You whip this thing up in literally no time. I just can't believe how nice it bolts up and it's super clean. If that was me, I'd still be working on it for about two or three days by now. That's why I'm here. That is why you're here. So everyone check out Jason Brazzle. Wes, what do you think of the turbo kit? Sick. That thing is sick. Doesn't the cow need that? It literally, he makes it look too easy, honestly. It kind of pisses me off. Well, Wes, said, Wes came like in the other day and he's like, dude, I've been watching a lot of videos on, on welding. And I'm like, oh boy. For you. <laughs> hey, he's already got the hat. That's, that's, the first that's, half, hey, that's half battle? I brought my cornhole shirt today, too. Like oh. What is your cornhole shirt oh. today? Are you prepared? Uh -oh. No, I'm not prepared. Oh, oh! oh! Oh. oh no! What have you done? Wow! It's done. Came over for you. I don't know if I, I might be retired from cornhole today. <laughs> oh, Ben corned your hole. <laughs> look at Phil. <laughs> look at Phil. Look, 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 hey, we can get the memo. Everyone's here wearing a BPF shirt. <laughs> and you're repping his car. He's taking over. Say it. Oh wow! You're, 
Where's your hat at? I'm TKM fam today. Yeah, he's, he's full TKM. I yeah. couldn't even get half. I couldn't even get a shirt or a hat. I, he had to. Yeah. That's... Kevin must have paid you to wear that today. Kevin actually put me on payroll just to, to rock TKM stuff, so I think we're good. But God, dude, everything's getting BPF around here. The cow's gonna have BPF. The bull marrow has BPF. The damn Grand Nationals got some BPF on it. The vet has BPF. I mean, yeah. the salty carbon feather. <laughs> got to... got so many names, and I forget what we call <laughs> the feather chicken. The Is the G body? Do you have the coin to get some BPF? Let's see what we can make happen. It's gonna be there. Wes is like, Wes is my boy. He knows I'm gonna put Ben on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> ben, I'll be up there with your skin. <laughs> <laughs>